Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about complex exponents. Now, complex exponents are uh, are you know exactly how you describe it. You have a complex number here, but then you also have uh, a complex number there as well. Okay, so we want to know what how we can describe this, what it means, and we're going to remember from our previous video uh, a, a trick for any kind of exponent like this. We learned this already that z to the n, when n is an integer we could write as follows, e to the n uh, times the logarithm, and we use the multi-valued log of z. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing here, e to the c now of the multi-valued log function, or c times the multi-valued log function of z. So we can see here, remember that c then can be written as a plus i b, say, and of course, the log function can be written as um, e to the c times, <coughs> uh, oops, sorry, I can, I'm going to rewrite that, a plus ib times, and we write it as um, natural log of r plus i uh, theta. Okay, and then uh, the usual thing we have to do is like, you know, choose a branch uh, so we're not dealing with an, a multi-value log, but a particular value of theta that's within a certain uh, range of values. Uh, uh, so with this, then of course we can write it as um, e to the, and we just have to do all the cross multiplying, e to the natural log of r uh, minus um, b times theta. Okay, so that's the real part. And then multiply that by, I'm, I'm kind of running out of room here, e to the i. And then you just have to go, uh, there's a, a b times a natural log of r. And then also um, uh, uh, plus a um, theta. Okay, so you have to multiply these two together. We can think of that as being uh, summed on to here. Okay. And so uh, let's like go through an example really quick of, of how this works. So um, here's an example. Uh, so th I mean, this is we should stop for a second. This is pretty weird. This has really gone beyond uh, things we have really any kind of numerical sense for. Uh, you know, when you, typically we think of raising a number to a power, we have some idea that if that power is a larger magnitude number, that uh, 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 you know it's going to create like an exponential growth or some sort of a exponentiation that's going to make the number larger. But when we're talking about numbers in the complex plane, uh, this the sense of magnitude uh, and also this, the notion that these are vectors uh, starts to behave really confusingly. So let's see if we can get some insight into this. We have i. I'm going to take our base now to be i. So that'll be z right here. This is uh, our z value. And I'm going to raise it to the power negative 2i. So we're going to do i to the negative 2i. So again, this is a, you know, it can be somewhat mystifying that we're raising, uh, now we have these powers of exponents uh, involving complex numbers. Oh, sorry, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm blathering here a little bit. The idea is we have now uh, powers of, uh, of complex numbers being themselves complex numbers. So uh, let's write this down as, um, and the idea here is that uh, we'll write this down as e to the, again, we'll put negative 2i times log of i. Okay, so let's think of this as a multi-valued function now. Uh, we're not going to choose a branch quite yet here. Uh, so I can write that as, uh, so log of i then of course is going to be log of um, uh, e to the i uh, pi over 2 plus 2 pi k as follows. Okay, and that becomes um, i pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Okay, all right, so we can write that further, e to the negative 2i times i pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. So now we see here there's an i and an i, that becomes negative 1 times a negative 2 becomes a positive 2. Uh, and then times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Okay, uh, going a little further here, I'm going to 
bring that down there. We have e to the pi plus 4 pi k. So uh, let's look at these values, what this be. And notice that this is a real number. Uh, so uh, that might have not have been an anticipated, and it's clearly not something that jumps out at you that that's a real number, but uh, it's just a result of our calculation. So remember k, this is uh, you know just uh, any integer. All right, so where is these multiple values uh, on, on the complex plane? It's just like this. So uh, clearly for there's k equals 0. That's going to be e to the pi. We'll say that's right there. That's e to the pi. And then there's e to the i 4 pi k, a little bit larger. We can see these multiple values. They, you know, they're, uh, they exponentially grow uh, with every uh, positive k, like that. So this is k equals 1, k equals 2, uh, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. It'll just get bigger and bigger as you go further out. But now for the negative values, they're going to go in. They're going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, and uh, eventually going to uh, have an accumulation point at the origin. So there's all the there's a, an entire set here um, on the real line here of all these points that are generated out of it. So the idea is now we want to take the principal value. Uh, so let's take the principal value. So what 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 is the principal value in that case? It's uh, k is equal to zero uh, because then that gives us um, um, uh, the principal value, of course, is uh, e to the i, or sorry, um, i equals e to the i pi over 2. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, uh, uh, that's a, a pretty clear, nice, clean result. So let's, uh, let's try doing something else. See if we can get some intuition on this. Uh, so this I gave a negative 2i. What if I make that just i to the i? So let's try it. So again, let's remember this result here. Let's see if, uh, if we have some sense of the magnitudes of things here. So uh, before when I add um, i to the negative 2i, and if I take the principal value, so k equals 0, we got e to the pi. Okay, so what if I take i to the negative i, like that? Okay, i to the negative i, that should give us, uh, you know, it's slightly less, in terms of the modulus of our exponent, it's less. So let's see what happens there. So again, that's e to the um, uh, negative i times the log of i, and we'll take the principal value again. So that's going to be e to the negative i times um, uh, 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 i to the pi over 2. And that, of course, becomes e to the uh, pi over 2. All right, so it's clear that e to the pi is going to be uh, greater than e to the pi over 2. And it's also clear that the modulus of the exponent is smaller than this here. So we get some you know, sense of things of how it works. It should be that uh, uh, an exponent with a larger modulus uh, um, in general can create uh, uh, um, a, a bigger, a bigger value. But let's see if we can try another one. We'll try e to the, we'll try i to the i now. Now it's a uh, not a, a negative one, uh, but a, a negative i. I mean, it's a it's a positive i. So that'll become e to the i times. Again, we'll take that principal value, i to the pi over two, and that becomes e to the negative uh, pi over two. So. Uh, now, of course, this number is, is smaller than e to the positive pi over 2, which is, again, smaller than e to the pi. Um, but this has the same modulus as that. So uh, it's clear that some strange things are going on, and, and uh, it's not quite clear that um, these, these exponentials, these exponents, uh, behave in a, in a, in a, in a clear way. Uh, the real, really, the only way to really go about uh, understanding the action of, of a complex exponentiation is to just uh, perform it uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. So it's hard to find a general rule. Things are pretty complicated. Uh, but anyway, we always have this formula: z to the c is equal to e to the c log. Um, uh, oops, log z. Okay. And we can always use this formula, and again, you just choose 
a branch uh, of the log function. Okay. All right. So if that's the uh, you know our first result in terms of complex exponents, the next thing we need to do is uh, think about derivatives. and analyticity. Okay, so uh, again, we want to know, uh, uh, can I take the derivative of this? Well, again, we can write this as d dz of e to the c times log z. Uh, now, this is a, a, an analytic function, so this is analytic, uh, and that's an analytic function, and we're multiplying by a constant, uh, so I'm using this term al to mean analytic, well, I can take the derivative of e to some comp, some thing, so of course the, uh, the composition of analytic functions is itself analytic, so we should be able to take a derivative. Alright, so we know the derivative uh, d dz of e to the z is just e to the z. We know d dz of log of z is 1 over z. And we know uh, anytime you have an analytic function and you multiply it by some complex number, uh, the uh, you know the complex number it, 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 the, the derivative passes right through the complex number or uh, it passes right through multiplication. Okay, so putting these together, it's pretty clear we can take a derivative of this uh, uh, complex exponential. It's going to be um, so that's c. All right, so we take the derivative of the outside. We use the chain rule now. We use the chain rule, and that's going to be e to the c log z. All right, so nothing changes there. And then we take the derivative of the outside. So we have a c divided by z. Or sorry, you take the derivative of the inside function and multiply it by uh, the other one. So that's the chain rule. And of course, we can rewrite this. This again right here is z to the c again. So I can write that as z to the c times c all over c. This can also be written as c times z to the negative 1 uh, or z to the negative 1 uh, times z to the c and of course that is uh, c which is again is a complex number times z to the c minus 1. Ah, this of course is our very familiar power rule. So before we found out that when that was an integer, we could take the derivative to be this. So we subtract 1 from the integer, so we go down 1 integer. But now we find out that for any complex number, the, the, the rule works just the same. We just take this complex number and subtract 1 from it, just as we would an integer. But of course now uh, we have uh, you know, an interesting behavior there. Okay, so uh, so there's a good example of, of how to. Um, here's another result, at least for uh, uh, our, our our space of analytic functions now includes uh, uh, functions of this form, complex exponents. All right, so um, so that pretty much sums up what we want to talk about in terms of complex exponents. A short and sweet little video here, so it should help you get started on homework problems. So thank you very much.